Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this uh, Blitz Test postmortem, a postmortem of my Blitz game number 338. I was uh, black here, my opponent played e4 and I played e5. We get a, uh, a traditional opening, knight f3, knight c6, and then uh, knight c3. See, this move is not so popular anymore. The top choices are bishop b5, the Spanish or Rui Lopez, bishop c4, the Italian game, d4, the Scotch game. Knight c3, the four knights game. Now, there's only three knights here, but it's almost always uh, gets a fourth knight because that's kind of the most logical move at this point. Get your other knight out. And uh, this opening was very popular until uh, around the beginning of the 20th century, early 20th century, then uh, players started shifting from the uh, four knights to the uh, Rui Lopez as a way of achieving an advantage. And part of the reason is because of this line. So bishop b5 was the main move here. This is called the Spanish four knights. So it's like the Spanish game, but uh, with the extra knight moves. And um, Rubinstein came up with this move, knight to d4, as a very interesting way of uh, neutralizing white's position. You can also here just play bishop to b4 and just get a, a completely symmetrical position, and that's that's fine for black as well. Um, but uh, this is an interesting way to play, knight, knight d4. And uh, so you're threatening the uh, bishop, and uh, usually, oh, because he took, usually, a lot of times the bishop can just retreat, uh, but it is a pawn sack if, uh, if black plays there. He can just take that pawn, you haven't bothered to defend it. So what you do is you play um, queen e7 here, attacking that knight and uh, getting some pressure back. And uh, this turns out to be okay. He can try and hold on to the knight with f4, hold on to the pawn with f4. I guess that's the most challenging way to play. If he retreats the knight, then you can just uh, grab here. Um, let's see. Let's take a look at that briefly. You always want to worry a little bit about uh, uh, any pins along this. Uh, yeah, you don't take back right away. That's the trick. Instead of taking back immediately, you grab the bishop first. And then you can take here with the queen and with check. And then that, that um, means that uh, white doesn't have time to uh, arrange any counterattacks on the e-file. He has to respond to the check. And, you know, if he blocks with the queen, you're going to trade. And you actually have a slight edge here. You have to worry about um, this pawn over here that's under attack. So I'll show you how that would go. Queen here, queen takes, king takes, and then um, knight to d5 defends the pawn and uh, you're, you're okay. You can you can play the move uh, c6 there or uh, a6 to chase the uh, chase the knight away after a move or two. So anyway this is uh, a fine position for uh, black. The engine even thinks it's slightly better but at least it's uh, neutralized so you can basically um, equalize with this move. Let's, let's go uh, take a look at that again. Knight d4, knight takes d4 is the uh, uh, what he played in the game. And uh, knight takes e5 is the gambit line we were looking at. Queen e7. Um, the other way to play this, instead of retreating, okay, so I just wanted to show you, if he moves the knight, you don't uh, grab the pawn right away. You take the bishop, and then you grab the pawn with the queen. Okay, so the other way to play it is with uh, f4, defending the knight, and uh, indirectly defending this pawn. And now knight takes, knight takes, and uh, d6. d6 not only uh, kicks this knight, but it also defends this pawn on c7, which is once again under attack. So you always have to be careful about that. This knight uh, on b5 is dangerous if you don't uh, pay attention to what's going on. But then after this knight retreats, retreats, once again, you can grab the pawn on e4, and you've got an okay game. So that's if, uh, if, uh, <clears throat> if white tries to uh, grab the pawn. So in this game, he didn't uh, he play bishop b5, I played here, and he didn't try to uh, win a pawn. He took the knight, which is second choice. The other choice is, uh, is uh, just retreating the bishop. So I take back, I get a tempo, and then he went knight d5. The most common move here and most uh, probably interesting way for uh, white to play is with e5, counterattacking rather than moving the knight. Um, so let's take a brief look at that. e5. Um, D takes c3, e takes f6, and queen takes, and d takes c3. So um, white's a little better developed here, but he does have the uh, doubled pawns. 
Um, I, I think this position is about even anyway. You can you can play on from here. That's just how it would go in the main line. Um, but in the game, he played knight d5, and now um, I probably should just take it. But I played d6, so we're out of the opening book here, or c6. Thought you know I, I was going to win that knight anyway. I mean, I could trade it off anyway, <clears throat> or win the bishop if he retreats. So he's got to take this way, and and this leaves me. You can see the engine thinks this position is about equal, so this is okay. He goes uh, bishop c4, starting to line up on my f7 pawn, and uh, I developed the bishop out to d6. Maybe not the best move. What's the engine recommending there? Bishop e7. Yeah, that's maybe a little logical. I realized after I move this here, I'm going to have to move it again because I, I probably want to move that deep on at some point. It would just look like a good diagonal at the moment and uh, taking control of that square, but uh, it is a bit of a time waster, I guess. My opponent went d3 and I castled. Bishop d2. So we're all just developing. I, I uh, decide I wanted to get rid of this dark squared bishop rather than uh, retreating to c7. I, I played forward to f4. And uh, he went queen e2. And then uh, I took the trade here since he didn't bother. So oh, the engine likes that trade. Okay. I wasn't sure about it entirely. And then I played d6. Um, it's just that I got, I've gotten rid of his uh, dark squared bishop. So he's left with a light squared bishop and uh, pawns on light squares. So, so this bishop is not quite as effective. It has to maneuver around these pawns. And whereas I have a, a, good, a good bishop, not there, a good bishop with an open diagonal to come out on. So this guy is looking pretty good to me. Um, so he castled queenside. Bit of a risky decision. And uh, I played b5, just going after his uh, queenside castle position right away. He drops back, a5. So yeah, you can see my advantage is slowly building. So my play has been pretty logical so far. We'll get to the point <laughs> where I mess up before too long. He went a3, I went a4. And he drops back here. Oh, instead of a4, the engine thinks... Um, oh, it likes a4 now. a4, bishop a2. Okay, thought it had a different idea there. And then I went to bishop e6. Um, he really has nothing he can do with this bishop. And I thought this helps uh, win my diagonal. Win this diagonal for my queen. I'm, looks like I'm coming in here, and if he tries to block it with the b-pawn, I can exchange and uh, win a pawn that way. So... King b1 should probably be played here, just uh, trying to control the uh, a2 square. Instead, uh, he embarked on this adventure with his queen, with queen g5. And I thought, uh, yeah, and it's true. This is just premature. He, had, he just doesn't have enough support for his queen here to get an effective attack. Um, but uh, I didn't respond in the best way. I could play either of two moves. I could play queen a2 or I could play b4 right away. And I actually thought about both of those moves, and I wasn't entirely sure, and I played another... Uh, prep move, preparing to push those moves, but it's just not the strongest thing. Sometimes you gotta go ahead and strike. You know, sometimes you're you're well enough prepared. Uh, it's time to just move forward. And uh, so he plays this move f4, and I sort of ignore it and play b4. And uh, although this move is not a mistake, it's kind of a mental mistake because I should have been aware there's a, there's a threat here, which is uh, once this pawn has come all the way to f4, it can go to f5 with tempo. And then from f5, it can go on to f6. So at this point already, I should be thinking about um, what should I do if this pawn goes to f5. I should already have a plan. And instead, I was just ignoring this and continuing with my own plan. And that's a mistake. Now, it turns out uh, I don't get punished right away. I play b4. He plays f5. And the reason is that um, I have this move queen e5. Um, but, you know, you can't uh, rely on luck like this that you're going to have a move that's going to defend. Uh, you really should be thinking ahead. When you see this pawn coming forward, you have to think, oh, okay, it can get here in two steps, and one of them comes with tempo. So you should really have a plan in place for when uh, he's going to play it. So as soon as I saw this move, uh, f4, I should have started to think right in this position uh, because, yeah, this goes with tempo, and then it's here. So... Uh, uh, anyway, so that was that was my bad. <laughs> I ignored it. I pushed on with b4, and he pushed on with f5. I heard it again. I played queen a2. And now uh, he can play this move f6. He didn't play it, um, which is just lucky for me because uh, this is just a winning move. Um, the, the simple threat is uh, if I move my pawn forward, 
then he's going to come here and I can't stop the checkmate. You see it's a mate in four no matter what I do. I can play some silly moves to delay it for uh, a <clears throat> move or two. Um, if I do nothing, uh, he's just threatening checkmate immediately. I can't take it because the pawn is pinned. Um, so the only move I have here to stay alive at all is to run away with the king. And, uh, and then he's coming here with the queen and uh, he's getting a, a winning attack going. Now, now there's a file that's opened up for his rook to come in. Um, my king is getting chased around. Let's see, what's the best way to continue? Actually, the best way to continue is with e5, breaking through in the center. So yeah, classic attack. So I was looking at this in a very superficial way, saying, oh, what is a queen doing by itself? But it's not entirely by itself. If it's got a pawn to help it out, a pawn, having a pawn near your king is almost like having an extra attacker around. So f5, queen a2, a takes b4. Yeah, so after queen a2, he should have pushed on with f6. He steady took. And um, I took back, and and I still should do something about um, this f6 idea. Here, in this position, if we back up, before I played queen a2, I had the idea of playing queen e5 to defend. In this position, this is my second chance to defend. I can defend with the move um, f6. I can play f6 myself, and that will stop his pawn from coming forward. Um, but I and ignore it once again. So this threat sits there for uh, three moves. He plays king d2. Um, but he could have played f6 there, and I play queen takes b2. And now f6 is uh, outright winning. Look, it's gone from just being plus 1 to plus 5 here. Um, and once again, he ignored it. He played rook c1, uh, defending on the king side. And now, finally, I attend to this threat. So cancel that. Oh, oh I threw in the check first. This is okay. I, I had gotten a plan here to deal with the threat. For some reason, yeah, I just had not <clears throat> thought of this move f6, and I, I was starting to realize there was a threat here. Um, and I just hadn't found the defensive move yet. But I really should have slowed down and uh, stopped <laughs> stopped playing moves until I found a way <laughs> to deal with the threat. I should have been aware of the threat sooner, and I should have found a way to deal with it sooner. Okay, anyway, but after that, then the game goes smoothly. I've, I finally have dealt with the threat, and he's got to move his queen back. And um, I could just push on with a3 right away. So the trading is not the best way to play, but it still keeps the advantage. So I push on with a3 now. And he really doesn't have a good way to stop it. He tries c3, which you see is one of the top choices here. Um, and I just bring my rook down with check. And now he needs to block the check. What happened in the game is he went king d1, and then this uh, pawn is no longer stoppable. So he's got to block the check here. And then um, if I take, that's probably my best bet anyway. He takes, and then I push the pawn on. And he can stop it at this point. But... Um, What's interesting is that even though he can stop the pawn, he can't ever really uh, win the pawn because uh, I'm controlling all of these key squares. If, let's see. If, well, the king could try coming here. Yeah, okay. So he can chase my knight away, my rook away, rather, and uh, get into a position like this where I, where I win these pawns. And I, I just have this one pawn advantage. But it's an end game. I should win with careful play. But definitely that's, that's the best way for... Uh, white to resist. He can sort of surround this pawn and win it, but then I start winning his pawns in the center. Um, but instead of playing rook c2, he played uh, king d1. And this um, cuts off the other rook, so he no longer has a way uh, to get a piece over to defend against the, the various threats here. I just pushed on. Cancel that. What did I do? Oh, I took here first. And um, he played rook to rook takes c3. He grabbed the pawn. Then I pushed on with a2 played king c1, which uh, you can see it's mating in any case, but uh, but this makes it quicker because I can just uh, mate. And that's how the game ended. So um, hope you guys enjoyed that. Leave any comments you have in the section below, and I will see you again soon. Bye.